What is going on, everybody? My name's Logic Motion, and today we're gonna be talking about Capcom's stance on mods, cheats, and reputational damage that can come from mods. So they're gonna be the two main topics today. So without wasting any time, let's get right into it. So recently, Capcom's R&D YouTube channel released a 53-minute video on anti-cheat and anti-piracy measures in PC games. And two of the main topics I wanted to talk about was all mods being defined as cheats and reputational damage that could ruin the image of Capcom. For one of the first topics, it says that Capcom defines all mods as cheats. All mods are defined as cheats, except when they are officially supported. What they are doing internally is no different than cheating. When I read something like this, it makes me think that Capcom is starting to be a little out of touch just because you can't classify all mods as cheating, especially if it's just like a visual change. Take games like Resident Evil, Devil May Cry, Street Fighter V. If it's just changing something visually, is it really a cheat? And if the other person doesn't really see it, like even like Resident Evil is a single player game, right? Um, obviously some of them have like some multiplayer components to it, but if we're just talking about the single player experience, it should be okay to mod that. Like it, it's it's not cheating in any form. Uh, if Even if we take like uh, Street Fighter V, like if someone's just changing the way a costume looks visually, then it's okay, it's just for them, it's, it's a mod, it's not cheating. Um, take something like DMC5, you're changing the way a costume looks, you're changing the way a character looks, or like you're adding a sword or something that wasn't in the game, or you're changing the sword visually, or you're just like changing the way some, some things look or whatever, like that should be fine. It shouldn't be seen as cheating. And there is some like quality of life stuff that you could argue that could be cheating. Like let's say somebody wanted to take the HUD away or something like that completely. That should still be okay. There's other mods out there for Resident Evil that are, that 100% could be classified as like cheating. Like you could say like one-shotting zombies is like uh, cheating. You could say like more ammo drops is like cheating, but it's a single player game. So like, why do you have to have your hands in there, right? And if somebody wants to mod their game to have the more ammo or one shot zombies in there, they should be allowed to do that, especially if they're on PC. If you're on console, whatever, but like from a PC standpoint, it should be okay because one, it's not ruining the experience for anybody else. They're playing the game how they wanna play it. It should be fine. And when we talk about something like multiplayer, it shouldn't really be too much of a problem if it doesn't affect the other person. In the case of like Street Fighter V, you could put on mods and the other person wouldn't see your mods, but you would see your mods. And I feel like that should be fine. It doesn't really affect the other person. I know there were some stage mods that people would use and that would affect the other person. If it's something like that, then yeah, you probably shouldn't be allowed to change the stage mod. Uh, but if it's just a visual change on the character that you're playing and you're the only one that sees it, eh, I don't really see a problem with it. And I, don't, I wouldn't classify something like that as cheating. There's an argument to be made that it could be piracy if you change one of the paid costumes to be one of the costumes that you can wear for free. That There's an argument there that could be like, all right, yeah, that's like, that's piracy. But if you're just using the mod as like, you're, you're downloading unique costumes that are unique to, to what someone made and they're not even in the game, I think that should be fine. It's not gonna affect the other person that you're playing, they're not even gonna see it, and it's really just for you. So I don't really see how that has any form on cheating. Whenever I read junk like this, it makes me seem like Capcom doesn't really care about modding anymore, they don't care about supporting anymore, so in their future games, they might go the extra mile to prevent people from doing that. And there's so many single player experiences that people get out of modding that brings them joy or, you know, that you can't do anywhere else. So I, I don't know, I feel like it'd be a bad decision overall. I hope they don't go through with classifying modding as cheating because going forward, it seems like they want to stop modding with this mindset. And if it's a single player experience, it should be okay to mod. They should be able to do whatever they want to do to their game and they shouldn't be punished for that. And one of the other things that they talk about that I thought was important was reputational damage. The image of a product is tarnished when mods are released that violate public order and morals without permission. Mods can be mistaken for legitimate implementation and can cause bad publicity. Customers affected by buggy mods cost support time. So we're just gonna pick this all apart. So I do agree that there could be some reputational damage from 
mods, right? But I feel like the reputation that Capcom gets from mods is almost always positive. If you take a look at Devil May Cry and that stupid Virgil chair mod, it's like one of the most popular like things. Like people love that. Like almost everybody knows about that. The stupid uh, lawn chair that he sits in. Like that's a popular mod. A lot of people know about that. Take a look at uh, the, was it 100% expression faces from uh, RE2 with uh, Leon's face. Like people thought that was hilarious. I feel like there's more positive reception from Capcom mods uh, than there is negative. And those are just two like off the bat. I'm sure there's more positive mods that are out there, but those are the two that I can think of right off the bat that are like super positive and they're funny, they're hilarious, and it like it's not doing them reputational damage. And don't get me wrong, there are some mods that are a little crazy, like you have Mr. X like in the thong, but is it really that crazy? I mean, you, you play this game, shooting zombies in the head, blowing their skull off and ribs and all this showing, is it really bad to see Mr. X like in the thong? Like, is that really gonna be the thing that tarnishes Capcom's reputation? Absolutely not. People find it hilarious. People love that. When they see stuff like that, it's funny. So if it if, if it's doing anything, it's giving you a good reputation. More people are probably gonna wanna play your game. More people are gonna wanna mod your game because I'm sure most people know that that's not official. There's probably some, some guy out there that's like, oh man, I can't believe they put that in the game. But he's dumb and he just needs to do research. All right, let's get to the second one. Mods can be mistaken for legitimate implementation and cause bad publicity. I do think if someone is streaming and recording the game and you have like some new guy come in and he's never played before, or never heard of Resident Evil before, he might see those mods and be like, wow, these are legit. But I don't think on any occasion that it's ever been bad publicity. Uh, a lot of the mods are fine for those games. And you know, there might be like some people out there that use the nude mods, but I don't really think those are even all that bad to do. That's not gonna give Capcom a bad rep just for having like a nude mod in their Skyrim, whatever. All those games do it all the time. All right, let's get to number three, which is customers affected by buggy mods cost support time. So I think if you're modding your game, you need to know the risk. I don't think Capcom should be helping you at all. You should be going to your modding resources or whatever. So Capcom shouldn't offer any support time for people that are jacking up their game and don't know how to like return it to normal if they're modding, right? Uh, or you're trying to get your save file or whatever, all that nonsense. I feel like Capcom should waste zero support on that. Just because you yourself are modding the game, so you should know what you're getting into and the resources available to you. Uh, the modders should provide how to install that mod, how to uninstall it, whatever. The only thing Capcom should tell these people to do is like delete your game and reinstall it. And that should be, that should be as far as support goes. I really don't think that they should have to if like if you go into chat and you're like hey i modded my game and it's acting weird or whatever the only thing they should say is hey you need to delete that folder and you need to reinstall the game and see if it's fixed they don't need to offer any more support than that so i don't i don't know how much support or i don't know how much cost this support time is taking but that's all capcom should be doing when it comes to support when it comes to modding and overall i think if Capcom defines mods as cheats, I think moving forward for their future games, they're probably gonna implement a way in order to stop people from modding their games or make it really hard to mod their games. And I think when you do something like that, you really remove a layer of fun for your game. Um, you know, a lot of people love making mods for Monster Hunter, Resident Evil, DMC, Street Fighter, like people love making mods for those. And I think if it's just a visual thing, it should be okay. Let people be creative. Let people make these quality of life things for Resident Evil and DMC. Let people put in costumes or visuals that might not be in the game already. Um, give people that creative freedom. But if you take that away, then you really lose a, a layer of fun for your game and it's just, I don't think this is a good direction. I think if they if they ever get rid of mod support in their games, it just it feels like they'll be so bland. When it comes to Capcom mods, you have games like Resident Evil, Monster Hunter, Street Fighter, Devil May Cry 5, and a lot of these games have like cool visual mods where it changes the costume or it changes your weapon up or it changes how you look or whatever, and it changes the game to make it like really cool or really funny, you know? And some people really really like that. Or it could be quality of life stuff that just makes the game easier or uh, a wider uh, viewing angle or the cameras like panned out more. Um, 
these mods are like really cool and it gives people kind of like the freedom to customize their game how they want to that the developers might have not foreseen and i feel like if you take away that option you're taking away a huge layer of fun for a lot of your consumers a lot of your customers and it would just i i feel like it'd be detrimental all right let me know what you guys think about capcom's message all mods being defined as cheats or even better reputational damage by mods I think capcom in the last seven to eight years has had nothing but good reputation but with something like this and what it could mean for the future of their games it's just not good it's not good to read it's not good to think about i think if they ever do away with mod support in their games it would be detrimental capcom games are still going to sell people love capcom but i think a huge portion of their fan base their customer base would be really upset if they went through with something like this and it would be really unfortunate anyway if you liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you thought it sucked, give it a thumbs down. Um, and if you're not already subscribed, subscribe to the channel. What's up, baby? But uh, that's going to be it for me, and I'll see you next time. Take care.